Hi and welcome to ECCB Connects, a production of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank to share with you who we are, what we do, and how we serve you. Anguilla was the first stop on Governor Antoine's 2022 country outreach mission to ECCB member countries. Join us as we follow the governor and his team on this exciting journey. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this message. When the ECCB took the bold step to introduce Dcash, the people of the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union were at the heart of this decision. It's about creating opportunities. It's about connecting family. It's about linking friends. It's about changing the way we do business. It's about transforming lives. A journey to a place where none have gone before will not be without its challenges. But challenges will not deter us from our goal. It's about me. It's about you. It's about all of us. So join us and let's make history together. Thanks for staying connected. Governor of the ECCB, Timothy N.J. Antwine, commenced his 2022 round of country outreach missions in Anguilla on 4th May. His engagement started with a courtesy call on the governor of Anguilla. He also held discussions with the Executive Council, the Shareholders Committee of the National Bank of Anguilla Limited, and the Leader of the Opposition. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. The Valley Primary School is the ECCB's mentorship school in Anguilla. In March 2021, the ECCB donated $100,000 toward the rebuilding of the school's computer lab which was destroyed by Hurricane Irma. During his visit to the school, Governor Antoine met with the Honorable Minister of Education, Dean Kentish Rogers, and the principal, staff, and students of the school. He was also given a tour of the new lab, which is nearing completion, following which he was treated to an inspiring rendition from the school choir. Jesus, The governor wrapped up his mission to Anguilla with an engagement with the local media. That session focused on navigating the post-pandemic environment. During that engagement with the media, Governor Antoine and the ECCB country economist for Anguilla, Kevin Woods, explained how geopolitical developments have presented threats and opportunities to the fiscal and economic recovery of ECCU member countries. They also provided an update on developments in Anguilla and how the country could use its natural advantages to good effect and the role the ECCB continues to play in regional development. We now bring you excerpts from that media session. We meet at a time when the globe is dealing with some real challenges. Having seen the recovery in the global economy at the back end of COVID, we hope, we have now come face to face with the war in Ukraine, and that has had a very chilling effect on the recovery of the global economy. And we've seen it directly here in Anguilla and across the currency union in respect of an increase in prices for food, 
fuel, and fertilizer. And so our projections for growth will have to be moderated downwards because of the war in Ukraine. Having said all of that, we believe in this challenging moment there are opportunities for our region. And as a central bank, we want to focus on what are these opportunities that we need to seize to allow us to meet the moment, not just to confront the challenges, but to put us in a better position. Not to go back to the old normal, but to generate a new normal, which really is a higher trajectory of development. And so that's the backdrop, if you will, for the outreach we've had this week. I'd now like to invite my colleague to give you some developments in and on Anguilla. Thank you very much, Governor. Um, as Governor Antoine indicated um, previously, the pandemic, as well as the war in Ukraine, has had a, a deleterious effect on, on Anguilla's finances and economic growth. And we see in 2020, uh, uh, which was the height of the pandemic, the economy contracted by near 30%. Um, in 2021, there was quite a recovery. Um, it did not, um, all of what was lost, the output loss in 2020 was not recovered in 2021. However, there was an expansion in economic activity and we project that this is going to continue in 2022. Albeit, uh, we are a bit concerned about the effects of the war in Ukraine, uh, how that is going to impact um, growth prospects going forward. Um, this anticipated expansion in 2022 is also corroborated by what has happened with tourism. We've seen quite a recovery in um, arrivals in tourism. Uh, I was made to understand that January, I think it was, was yes. the best year ever. And this really is a good indication that the recovery could possibly strengthen, uh, barring unforeseen occurrences. That is. Uh, protracted war in Ukraine or escalation there and also um, the hurricane season if we if we have a benign hurricane season and Anguilla is fortunate for uh, not to be affected by storms um, this year. Um, during the time of the the pandemic what was observed was there was a diff there was a serious impact on uh, businesses during that time. They had to draw down on their savings because of the fact that real sector activity had fallen. And as a result, businesses could not, uh, they had to rely on, on, on their, 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 their savings, their accumulated savings, and they drew down on these savings. Uh, in the case of households, on the other hand, they were able to accumulate savings because they were not able, persons were not able to travel, they were not able to do things that they normally did. And as a result, they were able to accumulate savings during that time. However, since then, the recovery has occurred. Um, households have once again begun borrowing. However, businesses not quite the same. Uh, because of having to draw down on their savings, they're not in a position, as it were, to, to borrow as much. And as a result, we see uh, an uptick somewhat in household borrowing, but we don't see that um, so much so in businesses. Um, as a result as well of the uh, pandemic, um, throwing a lot of the supply chain offline, uh, many businesses were, had to close down as a result of the plummeting of demand for goods and services. Some of these businesses now are struggling to get back online as demand has picked up during the, 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 the recovery. Uh, but that issue with supply chain disruption continues to impact uh, prices. What you have is a surge in demand with constrained supply. As a result, prices are increasing. And we see this reflected, as Governor uh, indicated previously, um, it is affecting food and energy. And the debacle in Ukraine is not helping that situation. What it is doing is exacerbating the pressures on uh, prices for food and energy as a result of that conflict. So in the case of Anguilla, we can see the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, is going up and it is being dragged up mainly by two factors, a surge in food prices and also that of energy. Uh, we also uh, want to look at the, uh, briefly at some of the, the issues um, surrounding the loans which were placed on the moratorium during the, the, the height of the pandemic. 
Now, as a result of the plummet in real sector activity, it was very difficult for borrowers to service their loans. And as, as a concession to help um, borrowers, many of these loans were placed under moratoria in that there was a, a delay in persons having to service these loans until they were able to catch themselves, as it were, to uh, return to working um, as the tourism industry was taken off, offline. With the, with, with the recovery, gradually, persons retain their jobs and would be in a better position to service their loans. But until then, the loans were placed under moratoria. Uh, what we see in the case of Anguilla is that prior to the conclusion of this, this program or facility, um, Anguilla had some of the, one of the lowest percentage of, uh, percentages of their total loan portfolio that was uh, the portion of their loan portfolio that was under this program of, of, of protection. However, this program has come to an end in, in the month, during the month of March. And, and, and as a result, persons are now expected to resume uh, servicing their, their loans as they normally would have under normal circumstances. One of the legacy effects of the, um, well, two things. One, the resolution of the banks um, some years ago, and also of the issues now with the pandemic taking a lot of um, real sector activity offline is the presence of a, a high non-performing loans. Now in the case of Anguilla, it's above the ECCU average, and it is also above the recommended um, benchmark or minimum. However, this is really as a result of the legacy um, issues in relation to the bank uh, resolution issues. And of course, this would not have been helped by what had occurred during the, 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 the pandemic. However, those loans, they're lower than they used to be in the, the, the non-performing loans percentage is lower than it used to be in the past. However, it still remains above the ECCU average and an area where some improvement is hoped for uh, going forward. Just to say that um, the improvement in the real sector activity has also um, resulted in a concomitant increase in uh, the fiscal outturn, the, the finances. And we can see that um, over the last couple of years, um, the overall balance has begun to increase, uh, which is facilitated by the fact that revenues are now rising once again, and expenditure is being brought under control more, as the, um, the resources are the demands on the government lessen as the economic recovery intensifies. Uh, as a result of the improvement in the fiscal, we also see that that also impacted the debt to GDP ratio, which has driven, uh, as a result of the improvements in finances, the, the country's debt to GDP ratio has once again gone below the, the recommended benchmark of 60% of GDP. And we certainly hope that that will continue to be the case as real sector activity strengthens and the economy continues to grow. Um, based on the improvements in the tourism industry. So what are some of the action points coming out of this brief overview of economic activities in Anguilla over the past few years? Well, one of the suggestions is for the uh, for a, a leveraging of Anguilla's relative natural advantages um, in order to take advantage of the recovery in tourism. What do I mean when, when I say that? Well, there's certain intrinsic um, strengths that Anguilla has, and these should be used to good effect as the recovery in tourism gathers speed. One, uh, normally, uh, one of the study, one, one study showed that during the pandemic, uh, countries, tourism-dependent countries that appeal to high net worth visitors seem to fear a little better than those that are engaged in mass tourism. Um, you can recall that during the pandemic there were lots of um, constraints on travel, social distancing, things of that sort. Um, uh, properties with uh, hundreds of rooms uh, were having difficulties attracting visitors. But during that time it seemed like persons were more interested in staying in villas, wide open spaces. And Anguilla really appeals to that kind of clientele. Uh, such individuals are able to jump on private jets and go to their destinations rather than be huddled together on commercially aligners where there's a high risk of, of contagion. 
these are some of the intrinsic qualities that Anguilla has. The tranquility, peace and quietness, things of that sort that would appeal to high net worth individuals. And we want to encourage um, uh, those concerned to continue to, to leverage those strengths and to see how best you can utilize these during that period. Another recommendation possibly could be that of um, investing in renewable energy. Um, the renewable energy, um, green technology, uh, uh, global warming, these are buzzwords today uh, that attract a lot of attention. And for Anguilla, especially appealing to persons of high net worth, it's really important to make sure that you not only talk the talk, but you walk the walk. And although Anguilla and many small de um, developing countries are not responsible for the, f for the um, effluence um, in the atmosphere that result in global warming, the point is though that all persons are being held to account for their uh, seriousness as far as promoting um, green technology and showing respect for the environment. And in so doing, if Anguilla invests in green technology, not only does it reduce fiscal costs to the government, not only does it uh, reduce the depletion of foreign exchange um, in order to uh, import uh, fossil fuels, but it also raises Anguilla's credibility as a bona fide destination that respects the environment. And then another issue too has to do with um, strengthening tax collection and administration in order to support and uh, fiscal and debt sustainability. Um, what is important is in, in any tax structure is that there be uh, an equitable tax structure where people don't feel that they're paying uh, a share, um, an undue amount of taxes compared to other persons. And in order to do that, sometimes it's necessary to not only broaden the tax base, but also to ensure that taxes that are owed are in fact collected. And this is necessary in order for the authorities to be able to provide the goods and services that every citizen of Anguilla demands and rightly deserves. And so this is going to call for um, greater vigilance as far as collection and the administration of taxes so as to promote fiscal and debt sustainability. Uh, I would just like to conclude this section by, with one point, that of um, an action point with regards to financial stability. Uh, it is encouraged that the credit and re reporting bill and regulations uh, be en enacted. Uh, what does this relate to? Well, principally, this covers, for instance, the establishment of a credit bureau. With a credit bureau, it is a much more efficient way of pricing um, risk and pricing the cost of credit. Uh, right now, in the absence of a credit bureau, what banks would do is that if you wish to borrow money from them, they will call other institutions and find out if you have accounts there, are you servicing these accounts, things of that sort, to try and visualize in their minds what is the risk of borrowing to you and hence how should they price that risk vis-a-vis -vis an interest rate that they charge you. With the presence of a credit bureau, it would be a much more efficient way of doing this. You will, you will bring all the necessary information in a centralized location so that banks can accurately price the risk that they will have to entertain by lending the particular borrower um, a sum of money. And so we want to encourage um, uh, greater progress in this area in order to facilitate the establishment of a credit bureau. I think, Governor, I'll turn it over to you now. Right. So thank you very much, Kevin. And I'll just conclude this short briefing by just highlighting a couple other things that the ECCB is doing. Uh, when we do these outreach missions, we not just talk about what we see and what the challenges are, but we look for, as I said, opportunities. What can we do to help? And there are specific things that we're doing. So we're going to just mention a couple. Uh, the credit bureau Kevin just spoke to, um, because when you ask us, so what are we doing about high NPLs in, in Angola? And in fact, in the currency union, what are we doing? Well, one of the things we are doing is this year, we plan to launch the credit bureau. And that requires the legislation that uh, Mr. Woods just spoke about. So we want to see that happen. We also have the Eastern Caribbean Asset Management Corporation intended to buy bad loans, give banks 
money back so that they can make additional investments, make money available for credit. If you keep all of these bad loans on your books, it stifles the bank's ability and capacity to make new loans. That's something people don't get. And then you go to the institution and you say they're not making loans. So the role of the AMC will be to enable the banks to be able to have that additional liquidity at their disposal to make more credit available. In the context of NCBA, for example, in Angola, that is extremely important. It's your largest bank, and it is important. And NCBA, as we said from the beginning with, with, in 2016, has a very important role to play in the development of, of Anguilla, as do other financial institutions, whether it's Republic, Liberty, other credit unions, and so on. But NPLs have to be handled, and that is how we, one of the uh, couple of things we plan to do. The digital currency we will launch hopefully uh, next month, or as soon as uh, Anguilla is ready. We are working now with NCBA and Liberty Credit Union, and we expect to make announcements on that soon. Uh, on digital transformation, just to point out that as we build out a digital economy, there are certain enablers and safeguards. Enablers like connectivity, broadband connectivity, high-speed internet. That's important. We saw it in the, in the pandemic with schools and, and even with churches and so on. And this, the disconnect or the divide between the connected and the unconnected. So we have to improve high speed, not just fast, it has to be affordable, and it has to be reliable. And so that's an area we're working on. But we know as we build out a digital economy, you have to take care of things like cybersecurity. That's one of the safeguards. So we are working with CARICOM Impacts, OECS Commission, ECTEL, and the World Bank to position us to be able to boost cybersecurity in our region. And uh, we're also offering a number of exciting programs for our youth, which I won't go into now, but which are very important as we move forward. On food, we just want to say, given what we're seeing right now, with the price of food and the possible shortages because of the war in Ukraine, it becomes even more important for us as a region to produce more of our food and to rely less at the moment at least 80% of our food in this region are, import, are imports. That is way too high. And the drivers of that, meat, breakfast uh, products like cereal, and fruits and vegetables. If we, at least half of the food import bill comes from these three areas, meat, breakfast products, and fruits and vegetables. So if you want to tackle seriously food and nutrition security, we have to produce more of these three things. And uh, so there's a big discussion going on now in the region about how we can reduce the food input bill by at least 25% over the next three years. And our hope is that Anguilla will be part of that solution as well. And uh, finally, I just want to say on the legislation that when we do what we do in the currency union, it requires an enabling legislative framework. In the case of Anguilla, we are asking for Anguilla to speed up the passage of outstanding legislation, especially the credit reporting bill for the reasons that we've just explained, but there are others there as well which would enable, just create more economic support, a more uh, strong economic climate, uh, support business activity, create an enabling environment to see businesses flourish more. And therefore, we are encouraging our government, the government of Anguilla, and indeed all of our governments to move faster on legislation. Following the presentation, the Governor and Mr. Woods responded to questions from the media. We will bring you that segment in our next program as we continue to follow the Governor on the first leg of his 2022 country outreach mission to member countries. And now for this week's financial tip. Pay yourself first. You've heard that one before. That's because that is the best way to save money. Try to put away at least 10% of each paycheck. If you can't manage 10%, try 5%. Anything is better than nothing. And you'll be surprised at how easy it is. We've come to the end of this episode of ECCB Connects. Thank you for watching. Be sure to connect with us next week when we'll bring you the question and answer segment of Governor Antoine's engagement with the media in Anguilla. <laughs>